Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a review of Transcript by Heimrad Bakker. So this is like a poetry collection. It's basically found poetry based on documents from throughout the Holocaust. I think I discovered this because of Mark Nash's channel. I know I discovered it through YouTube, and Mark Nash has reviewed it on BookRead, so I think that might be why. I'm going to read you the blurb, and then I'm going to go through and read out some of my tabs, and then I'm going to share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. So, Transcript is a disturbing document. Using the techniques of concrete and visual poetry, Heimrad Bakker presents quotations from the Holocaust, planners, perpetrators and victims. The book offers a startling collection of documents that confront us with details from the bureaucratic universe of the Nazis and the intimate worlds they destroyed. Bakker's sources range from victims' letters and medical charts to train schedules and the telephone records of Auschwitz. Transcript shows us that the Holocaust was not unspeakable, but was an eminently describable and described act spoken about by thousands of people concerned with the precision and even the beauty of their language. Heimrad Bakker, 1925-2003, was a poet, a photographer, and the editor of the journal Neuer Text and the Austrian avant-garde press edition Neuer Text. As a teenager, he was active in the regional leadership of the Hitler Youth and joined the Nazi party when he turned 18. After the war, he studied philosophy and wrote his doctoral dissertation on Karl Jaspers. He published six books of concrete and visual poetry. So again, I'm just going to read these out because I think that's the best thing to do, especially with this. This is kind of the point of it, that this is just the transcript. If functioning heaters are present, no more fuel is to be added. If it is a matter of slow burning stoves, such as tiled stoves, the stove door is to be opened so that the fire goes out while you are still in the Jews' residence. When you leave the residence, the fire must be extinguished. I need some more freight trains if I'm going to take care of things quickly. Not suspecting their impending scheduled death, the people clapped and some broke out in jubilant cheering. With short pieces of string distributed by a little four-year-old Jewish boy, the shoes are tied together. The people wait in their gas chambers. They can be heard crying. Just like in the synagogue, Professor Fanstyle says, Professor of Hygienics, and he listens with his ear up against the wooden door. The inspection glass that was built into every door had fogged up relatively quickly from the inside. The dead remained standing, like basalt columns. They couldn't fall to the ground or bend over. Then he shook the gas into the chute and it went, mmm, and the sound gets quieter and quieter until it isn't there anymore. I turned 12 on June 2nd and am still alive for the time being. This is possibly m one of my favourite sections of it here. Do you know anything about the Black Wall? No. Do you know anything about the Gravel Pit? No. Do you know anything about Block 11? No. Did you know anything about the gas chambers? No. Did you see the blazing fires? Here we have that criminal accomplice Count Stauffenberg. That killer Count Stauffenberg. A rogue like Count Stauffenberg. That killer, Count Stauffenberg. Three men with a hook go down into one of the mass graves, and two, with another hook, stand at the top. The three who are in the grave put the hook into the corpse and pull it out of its original position. Afterward, the two on the top pull hard, and this sinks the hook deeper into the body. Then they pull it up. One has to be very careful while sinking the hook because the corpse, already in an advanced stage of decay, might break in two. Another group, the carriers, now put two to four corpses, depending on their size, on the stretchers that were brought here yesterday. Two inmates work with each stretcher and carry it over to the nearby fireplace. The chief fireman now pours gasoline and oil on the wooden foundation and starts the fire. The carriers, with their stretchers, climb the steps and toss the corpses into the fire. On the one side one pair goes up and on the other side another pair goes down. It is worked this way so that one pair does not interfere with the other. The carriers continuously rub their hands in sand because their hands, as well as the handles of the stretchers, become slippery from the bodies. The chief fire tender is black from the soot and singed, and he has a rod in his left hand with which he stirs the fire and directs the traffic. The card file on the dead was larger by far than the one on the living. I thought this was interesting here, so we have notes and bibliography. Every part of transcript is a quotation. Anything that might seem invented or fantastic is a verifiable document. Slight changes and omissions, which allow the unaltered contents to stand out in sharper relief, are not explicitly indicated. The notations from, or based on, for example, based on Hilberg, indicate that new textual patterns were configured from passages reproduced verbatim, sometimes to the point of a methodical gibberish that replicates a deadly gibberish. So, and then there's um, an, an essay here called The Describability of the Indescribable, or Attempting an Afterword to Transcript. It says, Backer's transcript is not a description, however, not a report. It is enough, says Heimrad Backer, to quote the language of the perpetrators and the victims. It is enough just to stick to the language preserved in the documents. Concurrence of document and horror, of statistics and dread. And then we have a mention in an afterword to the English edition. He does not seem to have known the American poet Charles Resnikoff's 1975 book Holocaust, but it offers useful points of comparison with transcript. 
and uh, Holocaust is another cracking poetry collection that I would 100% recommend. So all in all, I would say that um, Transcript was just fascinating. Uh, it's really poignant, very moving, quite hard to read as well. I mean, yeah, I just love this kind of stuff. I think it's really, it does a great job of showing the pure power of words. I gave this a five out of five and it's a strong contender for uh, definitely my favorite poetry book of the year. It's actually knocked off Lisa Cantoral's Trash Panda, which previously held the spot. So there we have it, that's what I thought of Heimrad Backer's transcript. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book if you read it. Hit the like button if you've enjoyed this video, hit subscribe for more, and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot, bye bye.